it's a tough one for me to talk about. You're just like, man, I wish my dad walked. I was three when my father had his accident. Growing up with a father in a wheelchair, wheelchairs was just another thing we had to put in the car. After rehab, he started getting into wheelchairs. I just wanted to design the frame of the chair so you can lift it across you so it doesn't get caught in the steering wheel when you're lifting it in. Like, I'm more of a visionary. See something, develop it, and then pass it on to someone else. And you'd come home and there was a posture, someone working in assembly, someone welding. Yeah, Mike came along and he was our business partner for 27 years. The business wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Phil and Annette. And then there was Mike and Claire. At the start of the business, Annette, you know, she was here from day one, really, giving up a good job at the hospital she had, come and own a wheelchair business. I don't know how the place would function if she wasn't around. When it happened to me, and I was told that I was never going to walk again and I was going to need a wheelchair, it was a bit of a, it was pretty surreal to be honest. I spent six months in hospital and I knew nothing about wheelchairs. I just thought, yeah, you just sit in one and, and you're off and racing. Kind of get what you're given. So my first day chair wasn't even a Melrose chair. It was actually when I went to wheelchair rugby and I got a rhino. It's like, why aren't I in a Melrose day chair? Mike and Jeremy Tinker, who was one of the wheel blacks, really helped us develop the rugby rhino chair. A couple of guys from Belgium, they got their chairs made while they were here and all of a sudden it started sort of taking off. Most of the Belgium team, like Holland, Finland, Switzerland, Sweden, Ireland and Great Britain, all those countries there wanted our chairs. It was a bit of a compliment really. Our rhino is our signature chair. There was a lot of development work that went into it. 30 years, some big learning curves about getting the right welding processes, the right tubing. It's not just a, a chair with wheels on it. Yeah, wheelchair rugby is a contact sport. You do go out there to smash into people. I think one of the most important things is to have a wheelchair that does fit you. It's their life they spend in the wheelchair. They have to be comfortable. They have to have their right postures. You could have a chair an inch too wide. It's not comfortable, it's sore. It can cause a lot of health issues in the future. Having that custom made feel, but also having a chair that looks good is a massive thing for me. When you see kids light up when they come in for their new wheelchair and it's got that custom colour, that custom spoke guard, it is everything. We always say we can do anything. Custom heights, lengths, the size of your wheels, colour of your spokes, the colour of the frame. Even if we don't have it, we will try and bring in the colours and do those special things. Finding out that you can still represent your country in a different sport was was pretty special. And for me, it was like, OK, you know, I'm not going to be an all black, but I'm going to be a wheel black. The Worlds, when they were in Australia, there's a final going on. There was 23 chairs on court and 20 of them were Melrose chairs. Seeing our chairs on that international stage is huge. It kind of came home to us that we were selling a good product. Every single member of the Wheel Blacks is in a Melrose Rhino. Being able to get the opportunity to wear the black jersey, no one can ever tell me now I wouldn't have been an All Black. I feel pretty special really, you know that all these people around the world want to buy our chairs. It's not just about giving them the wheelchair, it's, it could be changing their life. This year is our 30th anniversary. You don't just come here and do the same old stuff. We're here to grow and evolve into something a little bit more amazing. <laughs>